What's happening, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with Packer. Welcome back on the pursuit of wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. Today's Wednesday, May 3rd. Happy hump day. Hope you're well. And in this video, by popular request, going to go over the ETF MSOS, going to talk about a trade opportunity that is presenting itself where we could see a potential gain of 100 to 200%. And like I said, a lot of people ask me to do some analysis on this. So before we get to it, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, take the bell, you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Speaking of videos, I did post a couple of videos uh, this week and I posted one yesterday Minnesota set to be the next state to be legalized at the adult use level and uh, if you haven't already checked that out you can check that out but we're starting to see uh, you know passing that bill pass the Senate and the House but not just at the state level we're seeing it at a federal level as well Safe Banking Act was also reintroduced in the House and the Senate if you haven't seen that, you can check it out. Also, Cureleaf just had earnings. Uh, Green Thumb had earnings as well. I think it slid 4% sequentially. I might do a video on that one a little bit later, but things are starting to heat up in the MJ space, no pun intended. And we're taking a look at all of these different catalysts that are coming down the pipe. So we're looking at potential, you know, HHS and DOJ, the potential that they could reschedule or even deschedule or put it on the same level playing field as alcohol. Uh, that would be huge. Obviously, we have you know Biden signing the research bill. We have safe banking reintroduced. It just keeps coming up. More and more states starting to legalize. And right now, MSOS is down. If we take a look at the monthly time frame from the all-time high, we're currently down over 90%. So not a bad idea, not financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only, obviously, but uh, not a bad idea, in my opinion, to start loading up for the long term. So if you're looking for a long-term position, a lot of people in the US, they don't have access to OTC names. So if you don't have access to over-the-counter, these different tickers, one way to gain access would be through this MSOS ETF, right? And it's also managed for you. Uh, and there's a basket of different MJ companies. So the trick is going to be, you know, finding the companies that are going to be here in five to 10 plus years from now, right? So MSOS can be a good way to, you know, hedge and, and manage that risk and also diversify a little bit. And it's also listed on a US major exchange. So therefore, lots of capital can flow in. Uh, but right now, down over 90%. If you're looking for a long-term entry, uh, I would say that anytime right around these levels, you know, not a bad idea to start scaling in at these levels. Uh, could we go lower from here? Absolutely. Um, we know that MJ probably isn't going to see any massive upside, I, I don't think, for at least a couple of months, bearing you know any kind of white swan or black swan events. Obviously, those are going to be unpredictable. Uh, all we can do is prepare, right? And now is the time where we're starting to see you know safe banking, where we could potentially see these companies in the U.S., and uh, abroad, right, we could see more international markets like Germany and Mexico coming online soon, and then the rest of the EU, and then the US, right? And we, as we know, the US is never first or never last, um, but this is gonna be the medicine of the future. This is only ever gonna happen once, so it's best to get prepared now and you know, be prepared for if something does happen, you know, if we get legalization of medical or if we get rescheduling or descheduling, that we're prepared for that, right? So just starting to uh, build positions, I think by now people are probably already uh, down in their positions, so for me, as you know, what I'm doing uh, in my portfolio and my trading game plan, I'm just continuing to dollar cost average, right? And MSOS is one of those names that I own. I own about 15 different MJ stocks. I have some producers in the US, producers in Canada. I have retailers as well and some ETFs and MSOS being one of them. And I'm gonna show you a trade opportunity right now. But like I said, if you're looking for long-term entries, uh, you can't go wrong in my opinion at these levels. But again, just expect that we could go a little bit lower from here and then you can use those opportunities to just back up the truck and to continue to dollar cost average. But again, you need to do your own research and figure out what's right for you. But I did mention in the Powell Group bi-weekly newsletter that we could see a trade opportunity here off of $5 psychological and $5 support. So we did have a daily bear flag here with the high, low, lower high, anything under that 0.3 to fib there at 743 was a potential daily bear flag. And we confirmed it and the target was 509. And you can see here we got as low as 505. So we hit that target. And that's why I was calling for a nice trade opportunity. And if you take a look from the low there to where we bounced, uh, I was about 20%. So those people, I've mentioned this a couple times in my videos as well. I mentioned it in the Powell Group biweekly newsletter a few weeks ago and mentioned this daily bear flag target of around $5, $5 being a nice round psychological support num number as well, right? Uh, and then playing with a stop, uh, a stop loss, a pretty tight stop loss at, at that, right? So you could play it many different ways. You can enter now long, right? You could just, you know, start to dollar cost average in, uh, hold it for the long term. I don't think you can go wrong. But if you're looking for a swing trade, like I said, off $5, you could have set your stop at, say, you know, 444 or 449, 474, uh, and you could have set a tight stop and played off $5 psychological, and you could have entered with a 20% gain, right? Uh, but now, obviously, we've come down since that move, 
We're now down over 11%. So you can start to do the same again. You can start to scale in now, playing off $5 psychological. We do have some hidden bullish RSI divergence here as well on the weekly time frame. So we have higher lows and higher highs. You can see the RSI is trending higher when the price action is lower highs and lower lows and trending lower. So we could see, like I said, a reversal on the horizon here. And like I said, what better time to start to scale in when we're down over 90%? We're starting to see some hidden bullish RSI divergence here on the weekly time frame, and we're starting to th see things heat up, not only at the state level, more and more states starting to legalize. We're starting to see safe banking, you know, more, I know what you're thinking, we've seen this time and time again, we've seen this movie and nothing ever happens, it gets stalled in the Senate. Uh, we need people like Mitch McConnell to get out of there, anti-MJ, uh, and we need, you know, congressmen and congresswomen to do something about this, right? And give the people what they want. We know there's an overwhelming majority of people who want MJ legalized in the US. But again, it's just going to take time. As we know, these politicians, especially in the US, they're very, very slow. But again, it's only ever going to ever happen once. So now is the time to get positioned. And like I said, if you're looking for another trade opportunity, you could still enter here on this pullback. If you miss that 20% pump that I mentioned, could potentially happen after hitting the daily bear flag. Well, here we are starting daily consolidation again. And this is the third time in four days, and we're coming back down on that support. So we could start to scale in, you could play that same same play again, and you could potentially set your stop. Like I said, it depends on how much risk you wanna have. You could set it at you know 474, you could set it at 449, uh, however much risk you're willing to take on. But if we see the monthly time frame bounce get underway, look at this, this monthly time frame here. We have a lower high every single candle for the last six months. So another way to play it would be is if we break the high of the previous monthly candle, the monthly bounce will be underway for the first time in six months, so a half year, and then we could see a uh, massive upside from there. So one level to be watching is 604, that's the high of last month. If we break that, we start the monthly bounce and then we have no resistance until EMA 12 there, which is about a 60% move from here. The price action resistance is about 140% of upside and EMA 26 is about 200% of upside. So even just playing off a break of even if you just entered on a break of resistance there at 604, this could be a potential trade opportunity of 100 to 200%. So that's one way you could play it as well. Um, if you're a little bit more conservative, maybe you want to wait for that monthly bounce to get underway. If you're a little bit more aggressive, maybe you want to start to scale in now. And like I said, play off that $5 psychological support once again, where we could potentially see you know a type of triple bottom off of that bottom fish opportunity in that that support level. So $5 psychological, we could see a flush of $5. That's a possibility as well. So that's why I would recommend if you do want to take this trade again, this is just my opinion and not telling you what to do, not telling you to buy, sell or hold. This isn't for inter this is, is financial advice, entertainment purposes only, you know, the whole spiel. But um, just, you know, keep in mind that if you are going to be entering, we could see a flush. And that's why allowing a little bit of, a, of wiggle room there uh, can be beneficial, right? So again, if you're using large capital amount, maybe you don't want to use as much, you don't want to take on as much risk, right? So if you're losing a little bit less capital, maybe you can afford to put a stop loss at 449, something like that, right? Where you can risk, you know, 10 to 15% to make, you know, 50 to 100%, maybe even 200% gains on this trade opportunity. So like I said, uh, definitely good risk to reward here opportunity playing off $5 psychological those who missed it get another shot and we are starting to heat up here on the on the weekly time frame here as well you can see the stochastic and the MACD has crossed bullish we just need to get a weekly candle close over this 10 week moving average and we'll have all systems go essentially so 579 if we can close over that this week or next week that's going to be a big momentum shift back to the bulls and then in terms of the weekly time frame we have no weekly moving averages nearby until 945 which is the 50 weekly so again you could easily see 100 percent move in my opinion bearing any positive news if we get safe banking if we get you know legalization of medical if we get any kind of rescheduling news so many different catalysts that could be coming down the pipeline right so just something to uh to be aware of and start to plan now, right? And we could see an EMA 12 and uh, 26 bull cross on the daily time frame. Also something that we'll be watching for is a weekly candle close over this EMA 26, this white line. We got here resistance, resistance into this brutal bear market. We got above it here, but then the next week we, we closed below, back below and it ended up being a massive sell-off. So uh, what I wanna see is at least two to three candle closes over that EMA 12, uh, 26, that white line. And if we see two to three candle closes, that'll give us confirmation and we could be off to the races after that. And then we could be set for a potential golden cross with the 50 and the 200 day crossing over the next few weeks, maybe several weeks and few months. So still a lot of work to do. It's probably gonna be at least two to three months before we see a golden cross if we do see it in that time frame at all could entirely be the case that we see it you know later on um, but i am expecting a massive rally in the 
stock market because we know that uh, there's the Fed today, they raised basis points uh, by 25 basis points, the interest rate decision, and then we could potentially see an end to that. So they signaled that they could be potentially pause uh, here in the not too distant future. That would be extremely bullish for stocks and the S&P 500, the broader market and crypto. And then right now we have a bull flag on SPY, which is targeting around 438. And there's also bull flags on the crypto market. So everything's looking to be heating up. The DXY, the dollar chart's looking to break down. Uh, if we lose 100 on DXY, then we're going to confirm a monthly downtrend and a bear flag, which is targeting about 93 on DXY, which would be massively bullish for stocks and risk assets, right? And then, like I said, with MSOS, tons of opportunity here. And then also there was a bill introduced that Congress will be banned from owning stocks potentially over the next six months or so, which lines up with, you know, potentially into the end of the year, which I'm thinking where we could see a potential blow off top and the beginning of a brutal bear market, potentially even a, a depression, right? So, so we could be potentially seeing the biggest crash in market history, one of the biggest crashes. And I think there's going to be some massive upside potential here into the end of the year. And like I said, just, you know, preparing for all scenarios. But I do think that MJ could be positioned well uh, into the end of the year here, just given how beaten down we are. And like I said, MSOS offering at least 100 to 200 percent of upside here if we get uh, all the stars aligning and we get some positive news. Uh, obviously, we're going to uh, to just take you know take it day by day and be cautiously optimistic. Right now, we know that the Safe Banking Act probably doesn't have any uh, chance of passing just yet, uh, but it could be you know the fact that they're talking about it now, the fact that it's a priority and it keeps coming up is a good thing. So going to end it there. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. It's Rod with Power Group. Let me know what you think of this trade opportunity. Is this something that you're going to uh, entertain? Do you think you're going to take a position? Are you already building a position on MSOS? Are you uh, just you know buying and holding for the long term? Always love hearing from you. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.